So something pretty big just happened in the world of AI and robotics, something that could actually change how we interact with machines in the next few years. Hugging Face, the company that pretty much dominates the open source AI scene, just bought a humanoid robot company called Pollen Robotics. And this isn't just some quiet little side project. This could be the beginning of Hugging Face stepping hard into the AI robotics game and into our homes, labs, and maybe even classrooms. Quick reminder, we just launched a free newsletter where we send out the best, most useful AI news, tools, and tips twice a week. It's perfect if you don't have time to watch every video but still want to stay ahead in this crazy fast AI world. It's free, always will be, and packed with value. Just hit that subscribe link in the video description and you're all set. All right now, Hugging Face, the acquisition was announced on April 14th, 2025. No official price tag has been revealed, but it's a serious move. Pollen Robotics is based in Bordeaux, France, and they've been around since 2016. Up until now, they'd raised about $2.8 million in venture funding. Not huge in startup terms, but enough to build something meaningful. And what they've built is Ricci 2. That's their humanoid robot. And yeah, it's open source. The robot's already being used at places like Cornell and Carnegie Mellon, which gives you a good idea of its credibility in research and education spaces. Now here's the interesting part. Hugging Face has always been about open source software. You probably know them best for hosting a massive collection of open weight AI models and tools. But lately, they've been dropping hints that robotics is the next big chapter for AI. And this acquisition, it's basically the moment they turned the page. They're not just buying a robot, they're buying a vision. One where robotics becomes open, affordable, modifiable, and most importantly, collaborative. Thomas Wolfe, Hugging Face's co-founder and chief scientist, put it pretty bluntly, robotics is the next frontier that AI is going to unlock. And it makes sense. With all the advances we've seen in world models and embodied AI, it's kind of obvious we're moving beyond screens and into physical, real-world interactions. And Hugging Face isn't exactly new to this space. They've been building toward this moment for a while. Last year, they brought on Remy Caden, a former Tesla Optimus researcher. Yep, Optimus, as in the humanoid robot project. Then in May, they launched Lee Robot, which is basically an open-source robotics code library. Later that year, they partnered with the Robot Studio, another French robotics firm, to launch the SO00, this super-capable robotic arm that costs just $100. Yeah, $100, not $10,000. It's meant to be accessible, just like everything else they're doing. Then, in March 2025, NVIDIA chose Hugging Face as the go-to platform to host its Groot N1 model, which is, you know, an open-source AI model built specifically for humanoid robots. So Hugging Face isn't just experimenting here. They're clearly building out a serious robotics infrastructure. Now let's talk about Ricci 2 itself, because honestly, it's not your average robot. It's got two seven degrees of freedom arms, which basically means it can move a lot like a human. One arm alone can lift up to three kilograms and manipulate objects with some pretty impressive dexterity. The design is modular, so you can get different configurations. Single arm, dual arm, mobile base, whatever fits your needs. It's designed to run on ROS2 Foxy, works with Python, and even has a VR interface for teleoperation. You can literally see through its cameras and control it in real time, moving its arms, hands, and head with VR gear. And yeah, it's pretty pricey right now, around $70,000. But Hugging Face says they're working on driving the cost down eventually to the point where people could you know, 3D print their own parts and build their own robots at home. Imagine just downloading a blueprint, printing the parts, and assembling your own humanoid assistant powered by open source AI. That's the future they're going for. And why open source? Why not just go the Apple route and sell polished closed systems? Well, according to Wolf, safety and security are a huge part of the reason. He mentioned how Unitree, a fast-growing Chinese robotics company, accidentally left a back door in the open-source software of its robot dog Go1. That back door could have turned it into a surveillance device without the user knowing. So by keeping things open, 
more eyes can spot vulnerabilities, fix them, and push the whole ecosystem forward. The goal here isn't to replace human workers with robots, not yet anyway. Wall says the first wave of humanoid robots probably won't be about labor. Instead, it'll be more about interaction, fun, engaging, even educational experiences. Maybe robots at science museums or AI companions for programming workshops. But there's definitely potential for useful household tasks too, like folding laundry or helping in the kitchen. And let's be honest, who wouldn't want a robot to do the dishes? What's exciting is how this fits into the bigger AI ecosystem Hugging Face is building. Their platform already hosts some of the best language models out there. Transformers, computer vision tools, even speech recognition. Now imagine integrating those into Ricci too. You'd get robots that can see, hear, understand and act. All powered by open AI, not locked in systems where only a few companies control what's possible. There's also something kind of poetic about this. Hugging Face started as a chat app, then it blew up into the go-to place for open AI models. Now it's going physical, literally bringing those models into the real world, and they're doing it in a way that feels collaborative and community first, not just chasing profits, but building something that people can learn from, modify, improve, and share. Even their messaging makes it clear they want robotics to be open, hackable, and accessible to everyone from researchers and developers to students and hobbyists. And that includes the hardware. Wall said they eventually want to open source the hardware completely. So, that means like blueprints, schematics, CAD files, basically everything you'd need to, you know, replicate Reach 2 from scratch if you wanted to. Of course, None of this is easy. Robotics is, well, tough. There's a reason most humanoid robots are either stuck in research labs or, honestly, cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. But that's exactly why Hugging Face might actually succeed here. They're not starting from zero. They're bringing the same open source philosophy that made them a household name in AI and, yeah, applying it to robots. Now on the team side, Paulan's co-founders, Mathieu Lepere and Pierre Rune, are joining Hugging Face, along with about 20 other employees. And, you know, some reports actually say it's around 30. Which makes this Hugging Face's largest acquisition in terms of headcount. And it's also their fifth acquisition overall. For a company that's raised almost $400 million in funding, this is probably just the beginning. The synergy is obvious. Hugging Face has the AI, Pollen has the hardware, and both are deeply committed to open source. So yeah, this isn't just a PR stunt or some side project, it's a real pivot. Hugging Face is betting on a future where robots aren't locked behind paywalls or proprietary systems. They want a world where anyone can build their own AI-powered robot, experiment with it, improve it, and maybe even contribute to making it better for everyone else. But robots aren't the only thing making headlines. AI giants have been dropping updates that are just as wild. On the same day Hugging Face dropped their robotics bombshell, OpenAI rolled out GPT 4.1, and it's kind of a beast. So this is the successor to GPT 4.0, which already blew us away with multimodal capabilities. And now 4.1 is basically better at everything. It's got a massive 1 million token context window, and it's more reliable too. So it actually pays attention across long prompts and honestly filters out junk way better than 40 ever did. They also released two smaller siblings. GPT 4.1 Mini and GPT 4.1 Nano. Nano especially is uh, getting a lot of buzz. It's OpenAI's smallest, fastest and cheapest model so far. And it still shares the same improved performance DNA. So if you're building apps or tools, especially anything lightweight, this is definitely something to watch closely. Oh, and the price, GPT 4.1 is 26% cheaper than GPT 40. which is clearly a response to models like DeepSeek and Mistral starting to bite at their heels. 
OpenAI even confirmed it's phasing out the original GPT-4 by the end of April and ditching the GPT-4.5 preview by mid-July. From here on out, 4.1 is the new default. But get this GPT-5, it's delayed. Sam Altman confirmed it was originally expected around May, but now it's uh, coming in a few months. And they admitted it's been a bit harder than they thought to merge everything smoothly. So until then, we're riding the 4.1 wave. Now here's something totally unexpected. Google is trying to talk to dolphins. No joke. They built an AI model called Dolphin Gemma based on their open source Gemma framework. It's trained on decades of recordings from the Wild Dolphin Project. Underwater clicks, whistles, even squawks during fights. And it tries to predict vocal patterns like a language model, basically. It's chat GPT, but for dolphins. The craziest part is they're running this on Pixel phones in the ocean using a system called Chat Powered by the Pixel 9. They're hoping to create a kind of shared vocabulary between humans and dolphins. It's still early days, but if this works, we're literally entering interspecies communication with Loom. Wild times. All right, that's it for today. What do you think about robots becoming open source and us maybe talking to dolphins soon? Let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the next one.